it's Gal, and welcome back to Valkyrie's Art Corner. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notification when my new videos come out. Alright, today will be the last and final installment of How to Paint Ethan Klein from H3H3. Um, originally this video was going to end up being an hour and a half long, but I figured out how to do a um, time lapse video, so that's exactly what we're going to do here, and I'm just recording audio over it. So pretty much what I'm, I'm doing right here is I'm going back over and getting more of the tones that's actually human skin rather than um, him looking like a pale pinky. So and then just adding brown gradually into the skin tone to uh, add more of the shade. So pretty much what you're doing is you're shading and almost detailing with the uh, dry brush because this is a dry on dry technique where um, you have to keep your brush as dry as possible to kind of get those nice cool shading techniques into it. And then uh, pretty much you're just shadowing and highlighting as you go. And then since I had accidentally gone up a little too high with this color, I'm kind of going back and readjusting. Um, major tip. Uh, when you do uh, portraits and stuff like that, you'll want to complete the face first, so that way when you add your details later, you don't have any um, skin tone in your actual extra parts, that you need, like down there in the shirt and down there in the hair. So, and now I'm just taking a picture and kind of drawing in the details, uh, specifically where I want, uh, like his eyebrows, his eyes, and all that fun stuff. Um, so I'm going to just lightly draw those in and like I said, it just kind of tells you where you need to put everything. And those pencil lines won't show up into your paints because uh, eventually you're just going to layer and layer and layer and layer. And as I said in my last video, I don't do too many portraits. so. I had to be self-taught. I did a lot of reading and, and everything like that. And I practiced drawing him a few times before I even got him on the canvas so I can get where everything was right. So practice makes perfect. Don't take that for granted. Don't try to just one shot gun it because <laughs> it hardly ever turns out right. And then pretty much what I did there is I went and took some black and brown to make his eyelashes. And then now I'm going into just a little bit more fine detailing. So I took a smaller brush that's pointed and um, just kind of just outlining everything. I know it looks kind of sketchy now, but just keep on it and it'll eventually start to turn out. And with the paints to get the color that you're doing, you can either just add more black or more brown or more uh, white to it to make it lighter or darker. It all depends on uh, where the light source is coming from <clears throat> and what you're trying to go for. Uh, so, and one thing to always remember is that there's always some really dark spots on the corner where your eyebrows are because that's where the light kind of bounces off where your eyebrows are. And then there's always some white streaks on your eyelids because it just reflects off. That's just how the light source goes. So that's what I'm kind of doing is just going through and just adjusting it. If it's too dark, going over it with lighter tones. So that way it looks a whole lot better. And I do use my finger to help smudge the paint. So if it comes on too bold, um, it helps lighten it up a lot. And then you'll want to have the spots shadowed out where he, he, he would like smile. So you want to highlight the cheeks without making them too obvious. So you'll want to have more of a skin tone, but still a dark tone to emphasize where uh, the cheekbones and where the, the wrinkles would go. So I'm just building on, building on until you get the desired effect. his mouth. This one, it, it's kind of weird on his mouth when he's like stretching his face out. You can still kind of see where the 
the lips are. And the one mistake a lot of people make, and I've noticed in paintings, um, especially for beginners, they tend to add a lot of pink into the lips and that's actually not accurate. You wanna add more brown and white, white tones to it because unless you're wearing lipstick, uh, you really won't have that pink rosy tone. So you wanna have like a flat tone that's very close to your skin color. And that would be the inside of his mouth where his tongue is. The tongue's a little bit more pinkish white, so you kind of want to go with more of a pale effect in there. So that way you can see what's going on. And then just pretty much go back and touch up where, or highlight where everything's at with the bigger brush. So that way you can get what undertones you want first. If you have facial hair or if you're going back, or if you're going to go uh, do the shirt, or any other details with the hair, you want to have those um, set before uh, you actually go on. All right, and now I'm just going with the teeth. So I'm going with a more gray yellow tone because let's just face it, unless you're like a really, really rich celebrity, you can't make your teeth absolutely white. <laughs> So the average person is going to have at least a kind of grayish, white, yellow tone. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Sorry, Ethan. All right, so now at this point in time, I'm actually adding in the facial hair. I'm gonna start it with a base tone. I'm just lightly tapping and making little strokes like how you would with hair. And so I'm just going to go around his entire face because his face is really scruffy. And then um, keeping my brush as uh, dry as possible. Now, if I want to make actual hair hairs, I'd get my brush a little bit wet and lightly drag it down as thin as possible to kind of get your strands. Other than that, when you're trying to do bulk hairs, like uh, facial hair on men and everything like that, you want to have it dry so you can just kind of push the brush against the canvas and uh, make sure everything kind of bristles out and kind of poofs out. And then just continue to do that all over his entire face. And then down onto his neck. adding in black because his beard is actually more black but it still shows a little bit of brown so I'm just going back over the same stuff with uh, with the black to kind of darken it up and match his hair and dabbing black and brown into his eyebrows to make it look more realistic and then I'm going down here and just adding more highlights and now we're gonna go up into his hair so I'm adding a brown kind of gray tone into the hair just to kind of match the beard a little bit. If you notice on guys um, that their beard tends to be lighter than their actual hair. So his hair is going to be a little bit darker. And then I'm, now I'm taking the thin brush and adding in the grit, like the salt and pepper kind of gray color that he has uh, coming into his hair with some curls to give it some texture. And then I'm going to do the same thing with black and brown at that point. And then now we're going down here to the shirt since I'm done with his hair. And then just adding in the shadows and lights on the shirt to kind of give it its final finish. And then pretty much after you get all the shadows in and then your highlights in at that point in time, you could choose to sign it or if you wanted to do other things with it, that's up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign it with my insignia, the two wings. And thank you for watching and join us next time.